So continuing on, we find ourselves in our center of excellence power platform environment. We're gonna click on solutions in the left-hand navigation. We're gonna select import solution, browse. We're gonna to browse to our extracted COE starter kit file. And we're gonna locate the one that's center of excellence, ALM accelerator underscore version number underscore managed. So not the one that starts ALM accelerator for makers. So here you can see the name of the file. Obviously the version will be dependent on when you last downloaded the COE starter kit. So the recommendation would be to ensure that you get either, make sure you download the latest one, even just for the purpose of this zip file, but probably just to get into the habit of updating all of the elements. So we'll then click next. And we'll click next again. I'm happy with these connections. We'll click import. I'll just pause the video whilst we wait for it to successfully import. Now that's showing us successfully imported and we can see here in the history that it took about three minutes. Let's take a look at what the solution contains. So the main thing we're getting, or certainly the next element that we want to configure is the custom connector. So we can see here we've got apps, we've got two, canvas app and a model driven app. We've got some pages, quite a few cloud flows, diverse tables, web resources, pages, security roles, sitemaps, there's quite a bit going on. Uh, except at the moment, we're just interested in the custom connector. So with the custom, we're going to go in to edit the custom connector if it will let us. If not, we'll just do it via the way I should have done it all along. But now this will work. So now we'll click on edit. And we're essentially going to configure the security aspect of this and then test it. So this is where we're going to make use of the details that we copied earlier. So we're going to copy in our client slash application ID, although I may have to click on edit to make the fields available, which yes, I do. So client ID. I think I can possibly leave the tenant ID as common. I'm going to pass in the client secret. We'll just double check the other stuff. Yeah, tenant ID will leave as common. So we've put in the client ID, we've put in the client secret. The resource URL. Which they say is the DevOps application client ID we copied when adding permissions to our app registration. So let me just make sure I've got that from our in private browser session. Although I'm not convinced that the client ID alone would be enough for it, but we'll, we'll go with it. So it reckons resource you, the DevOps application client ID you copied when adding permission to your app registration. Okay. Pop that in there, select update connector, which we will do now. Then we'll want to ensure that the redirect URI, URI does correspond to what we specified earlier. So in all honesty, we could have probably not bothered doing it up front, wait till this stage and then just copy this and then add in the redirect URI to the app registration, which is normally the way you would do it. But looking at the redirect URL, we've got here, it does reflect what we already added. If it didn't, you would just copy this, come into overview, go into redirect URIs and add a web one to reflect what, if I can find the page again, what it shows here. So after we've gone down, we'll now go into our test menu or test area, we'll, we'll need to do a new connection. We'll 
which will follow the prompt. So we're just going to use our usual administrator account that we've been using all along. Ensuring that we've got the get organizations operation selected, which we have handily enough, it's number number one, and we'll click test operation. Well, we can confirm it's successful by the fact that we've got a 200. So for now, although I am a bit surprised that we're not actually being asked to set up the application user in the relevant power platform environment, but we'll leave it there. It, the next bit would actually be to make use of this. And what this is going to allow you to do is what you could, by all means, just do in Azure DevOps by setting up a repository and setting up service connections and pipelines and releases. It's going to give you like more of a wizard way of setting up those projects and extra stuff as well. So I'm going to leave that portion of setting up the first Azure DevOps project for use with the application lifecycle management accelerator for Power Platform in when we come to make use of the elements of the center of excellence. So that is bringing us nearer to the end. I mean, this is a meaty subject. There would be a lot more we could do around ALM and I do have an ALM video series. But next off, we're, we're going to talk about a critical aspect. It's great. You've got all your, your center of excellence components, but we're going to walk through how we would keep on top of ensuring that the components are up to date. Thank you for watching.